Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, my name is Julie uh, Niederhauser and uh, this is our Summer Reading 101, A Universe of Stories webinar. Um, I'm the Public Library Coordinator for the Alaska State Library. And each year the Alaska State Library helps public libraries sponsor a summer reading program for their communities. Uh, the summer reading uh, program, um, which is called the Alaska Statewide Summer Reading Program, uh, provides each participating library with a collaborative summer library program manual, which is loaded onto a thumb drive, and promotional summer reading materials. We also uh, lead a summer uh, reading uh, session during the ACLA conference and uh, this webinar. And often in the fall, we will also offer kind of a, a webinar just for people to share how their summer reading program went. And that's always a lot of fun. So uh, we'll let you know when that's scheduled. We're probably, we'll probably schedule it around August or so. So this year's summer reading a theme is space exploration, and it will coincide uh, with the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. And we believe University, Universe of Stories is a wonderful way to introduce children um, to the wonders of space and also to some fun uh, hands-on STEM, science, technology, engineering, or mathematics activities. So I think there's lots of opportunities for libraries to kind of uh, uh, use this theme. I've got a lot of things on my screen. I'm going to make some things go away. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, Alaska doesn't really have a professional astro uh, astronomical observatory. Uh, there are two astronomy clubs and I didn't even know this. <laughs> There's three planetariums in our state. According to information that I found on the Go Astronomy website. So if you happen to live in Anchorage, Fairbanks, or Juneau, you know, you may want to reach out to these people and ask if they want to partner with you uh, on your summer reading program. If you don't live in those areas, you know, you can also reach out to uh, maybe any local robotics or STEM clubs that are in your community. And if you have any other suggestions for po potential partners, please go ahead and share them in the chat box. So um, there's a lot of knowledge in the room and we like to take advantage of everyone who's here. So I really love the children's artwork uh, this year. It was created by Lisa Hernandez. I think her artwork is really charming. It's bright and it's colorful and it's a lot of fun. Um, she is the author and illustrator of the books Dog Gone and Cat Nap. She also illustrated Never Play Music Right Next to the Zoo. Bored Bella Learns About Fiction and Nonfiction. Uh, there's a library title for you. And the, the Eat Your Homework series. Um, so on the thumb drive that participating libraries, uh, each participating library receives is uh, the PDF files of, of all of the different manuals as well as the artwork. So take advantage of it. If you happen to be attending the ACLA conference in Juneau, and I hope everyone that is on this list is going <laughs> because there's a lot of work and we want people to come and enjoy it. Um, there will be a, a summer reading, summer learning session scheduled for Friday, March 1st at 3.30 p.m. And during this session, um, there'll be five youth services librarians and two of them are actually on this call. We have Susan Jones from Fairbanks and, and Jen from Gustavus. Um, and they, what they are going to do is be representing libraries of various sizes and then sharing how they will, how they are planning their summer reading program, um, you know, how they plan to, um, you know, any partners that they're working with, how they'll eval evaluate their summer reading program, how they plan to incorporate fun and possibly STEM activities into their summer reading program. So the summer reading session during the ACLA conference is a very popular event. Um, we we tried the panelists last year. It was, I got lots of positive feedback. People loved hearing from you, you know, people who are actually doing the programs, talking about what they're planning to do and how they are planning to do it. One of the comments that we received at the end of the ACLA uh, conference last year was people wanted breakout sessions. It's great to have all the panelists up there sharing info, but um, they also wanted time to just talk to other people who work in this in libraries about the same size as they do because. You know, we, we run the spectrum. Um, we have large urban libraries providing summer reading programs to thousands of kids, right? 
think of Anchorage um, and Fairbanks. And then we have smaller isolated off the road system libraries where it's a volunteer and maybe there's like 15 kids. And so how you organize structure, who you work with, um, you know, the, any kind of local funding opportunities, all of those things are very different. And so people wanted to have time to talk to people who work in similar size libraries. So we are incorporating that this year. So each of our panelists and our, and let me just name them for you. We have Elizabeth Nikolai from LUSAC. We have Sarah Saxton from Wasilla. We have Susan Jones from Nolween. Jen Gardner from uh, the Dermot O'Toole Davis Library. And Sonia Marks from Dillingham. So those are our wonderful uh, panelists, and I hope that everyone will come and participate. And I did get a comment. We asked about um, other potential partners, and Jen shared that we partner with the National Park Service for STEM activities. So there you go. But, um, some, of, some of you may want to reach out to the National Park Service and see um, if they will partner with you as well. Okay, I'm very excited to announce the NASA STEM workshop um, in Anchorage. So the Alaska State Library in partnership with the LUSAC Library um, has been selected as one of 10 state libraries to work with NASA at my library to bring down two trainers um, to lead this day and a half NASA at my library workshop. Now the workshop is going to be held at the LUSAC Library, you know, which is located in downtown Anchorage um, April 12th through the 13th. Now the first day of the workshop will begin at 1 p.m. and conclude at 5. So there was um, some initial discussion about offering a nighttime viewing, but as you know, in Alaska, we have bright summer nights. <laughs> and so um, it really isn't gonna work here. So they decided to not even try to go there. Uh, the second day of the workshop will begin at 9 a.m. and will conclude at 3 p.m. We do have um, limited $500 uh, like travel assistance grants for people to bring in people from outlying areas. Um, I have the URL here. If you are interested in um, attending this program, please go ahead and, and register. Honest, as soon as the ACLA conference is over, I will be, my attention will be focused on getting this workshop off the ground and um, getting everybody registered. I actually have a, um, Elizabeth Nikolai and I have a Phone call with the NASA folks, I think it's next week to, uh, it's our second phone call with them to talk about getting uh, the program going. Um, the workshop facilitators are Kellyanne Laconte. She's a professional development manager for the StarNet Space Science Institute. And Brooks uh, Mitchell, he's an education coordinator for StarNet. And they both have years of experience in providing um, NASA and NSA supported workshops to public library staff. So we are looking for people who work with kids to sign up for this um, for this workshop. Primarily uh, people like you guys that are going to be offering summer reading programs. So this is kind of a program. It's going to be offered in April before you launch your summer reading program. We're hoping to get you excited um, and have you kind of, you know, maybe incorporate some of what you learn at this workshop into your summer reading program for the kids. And so the goals of the workshop is to help participants gain confidence in facilitating hands on space science activities for children ages five to 13 and their families at the library. And to gain confidence, uh, confidence in making connections to current NASA science and um, some of the video clips, images and other educational and promotional resources that they have. So any questions about um, ACLA, uh, the, the session at ACLA or the NASA STEM workshop. If you haven't registered, please do, because I'm going to be using that list when I start sending out info. It's going to be pretty targeted to people who register. We have limited number of space available and a limited number of uh, $500 travel grants. Okay, moving on. So each time that I offer this webinar, um, and I've been doing it for several years now, I always go back to the why. Why is the state library supporting summer reading programs for libraries in Alaska? And um, the reason we're doing it is because we know that children experience losses in learning over the summer. And so some people call it the uh, summer, summer slide, slide. Yeah. yeah, or the achievement gap. But basic, basically it is, you know, these children, 
that are out of school um, and aren't reading or, or around reading materials, um, they they loon, lose their ability to read. So um, several research studies have been conducted on this topic. And the Collaborative Summer Library Program uh, published a white paper um, on summer learning loss in 2014. And in that paper, they mentioned that a socioeconomic status emerged as the single most consistent and significant moderator of the relationship between summer vacation and academic outcomes. All children, regardless of their socioeconomic status, race or ethnicity or reading level, experience similar patterns of improvement during the school year. However, low social economic status children fall behind during the summer months. And this is that phenomenon known as summer slide or summer learning loss. And research suggests that on average, summer vacation creates a three month gap in reading scores between middle and low income children. And as low socioeconomic status children proceed through elementary school, the reading achievement scores fall behind national average. So by the end of elementary school, these children are nearly three grades behind their higher socioeconomic peers on average. And summer vacation has been identified as the strongest uh, contributing factor to this achievement. So each summer, so during the summer, these children are falling behind. But it's a cumulative effect that over, you know, summer after summer after summer, they're just falling further and further and further behind, right? And so um, this is something that those of us, you know, that work in libraries, this is important to us because, you know, we can help children, um, you know, not fall so far behind through our summer programming, right? And there's other organizations that are working on this as well. Let me go to the next slide here. Oh, I forgot. I forgot about the slide. <laughs> so again, um, this is that summer, uh, the CSLP summer reading white paper that was published in 2014. And I always include this quote because I think it's really important. So it says, research on summer reading has identified that access to reading material and the volume of reading, example, more reading over the summer leads to better outcomes, is vital for improving reading achievement and preventing summer learning loss. So there's so many positive benefits for children to attend summer reading programs, right? And, um, you know, these pro children encourage children to keep reading during the summer. They help them to read widely. Um, so many of our schools have um, kind of a con conscriptive reading uh, list of titles that they want their kids to read from. Um, I personally am not a fan of accelerated reading. Um, from personal experience <laughs> with my own son, I, I he found it as such a turnoff. He had been a voracious reader, and then all of a sudden he was told what he had to read, and he just it just really um, impacted him. But um, so as as libraries, you know, we can encourage children to read widely. To read, you know, they can read beyond. You know, they can try. Maybe this book is beyond their reading level, and we don't care. You know, they can check out any book that they want <laughs> and good for them for for exploring, you know, different genres, different authors, different types of literature. Good for them. Um, but also, you know, when children come to summer reading programs, they're motivated to read. They develop more positive attitudes about reading, about books and about the library. Um, they maintain their skills during the summer. They have access to educational, you know, type programming, enrichment activities, all these things that foster creativity, um, curiosity, um, exploration. These are all positive things that we do. They also get to talk to other kids and spend time with them. And, you know, it's, a, it's such a positive thing. So um, that's the little thing that I share every summer. <laughs> have any comments about it you can enter you can share if you have a mic share it with your mic I'm happy if anyone wants to you know, chime in on uh, what they see in their libraries um, of the benefits of summer reading um, I'm happy to I'd love for you to share that with us okay oh wrong direction okay so um it's not just public libraries that are working on this we um there's also the national summer uh Learning Association. It's a nonprofit organization and they are solely focused on the powerful impact of, um, of one achievable goal and that's investing in summer learning to help close the achievement gap. So they have each year they have uh, it started as a national, a national summer learning day. It's expanded into a national summer learning week and this week is a celebration uh, dedicated um, 
to advocating to advocacy and awareness aimed at elevating the importance of keeping learning uh, kids learning safe and healthy every summer and ensuring that they return to school in the fall ready to succeed. Um, there's a lot of uh, in, uh, useful reports, um, some archived webinars and research briefs found um, in the Knowledge Center, which is located under resources on their website. And they also host an annual conference. And so uh, the next one is going to be held in uh, Atlanta, Georgia in October. It's titled um, uh, the Annual National Conference Summer Changes Everything. And your library can participate in National Summer Learning Week by registering um, you, you know, a summer learning event or program um, on their website that will be held during that time frame of July 8th through the 13th. So um, it's nice to know that they are doing this good work for us, uh, for kids everywhere. Okay. Okay, so the Alaska Statewide Summer Reading Program. Um, it's available to any public library in Alaska um, in order to participate. Uh, the library director or the person responsible for running the summer reading program needs to complete the online participation form, which um, is added to the um, Alaska Summer Reading Program website, uh, webpage in August. And we, o we only keep that participation form up from August through November. And again, we would really love it if just one person from each library would register. I know I send out lots of notices on the ACLA listserv and I might get three different online uh, registration forms for one library. So it'd be great if you guys, if you know, people running the programs will talk to each other and we just have one library submit. Um, the reason we keep that opening pretty limited is that I have to, um, gather all the uh, information about the libraries that are going to be participating. And then I have to create an order that needs to be sent um, out by December 1st. So I create this big order for the promotional materials and I have a deadline of December 1st to get that done. So we kind of close it in November and that kind of gives me a couple of weeks to pull that order together and get it out. Um, if you were not aware um, of, of the program, if this is the first you've heard about our summer reading program you, um, and you missed the deadline, I do normally order a few extra starter kits so you can send me an email after this webinar and I will personally register you and send you the materials. Um, in the past, libraries used to receive this paper version of the manual, but it was really heavy and, it, you know, um, and it cost so much money to ship that to all of the libraries that were participating. So when CSLP began offering this alternative um, thumb drive, we just jumped on that opportunity. And so now libraries are getting the, jump, uh, the, the thumb drive, which contains the PDF versions of each of the summer reading manuals. And so that that is the early literacy manual, the children's manual, the teen and the adult. And then this year there's a bonus manual and we'll talk about that in, in a minute. And it also contains files of all of the different artwork. So, um, we, I've been kind of highlighting the artwork created for children, which was created by Lisa Hernandez, but there's other artwork as well aimed for different audiences. So if you receive um, a thumb drive, it kind of comes in this little plastic package and there's instructions on also how to access the online version of the manual. So really you kind of, you have um, multiple ways to access the manual and that's great for libraries that might have more than one person offering a summer reading program. So perhaps one of your staff is leading the children's program and then you have might have a volunteer or somebody else leading an adult or teen program. So it's great to be able to um, share those man manuals widely. Okay. Oh, I should, well, and some other things. If you go to our statewide library site, you'll see that there's additional information about um, other potential summer reading um, partners. This is where we'll also we'll have a link to this recorded webinar there as well, um, so that people can get this information. Okay, collaborative summer library program (CSLP). So you may have heard us refer to them, but you may not really understand their really our relationship to them or their relationship to us or whatever. So the Alaska State Library is a member of the Collaborative Summer Library Program, uh, CSLP. And CSLP is a consortium of states 
working together to provide high quality summer reading programs for children, teens, and adults at the lowest cost possible for their public libraries, which is a great thing, <laughs> quite frankly. So by combining resources and working um, with an exclusive contracted vendor to produce the materials designed for CSLP members, public libraries and participating states can purchase posters, reading logs, and a variety of reading incentives at significant savings. So this, all of the summer reading, like the manual information or the, the part, um, activities, the suggested reading list, um, the forms, all of those things were created by members of CSLP working in various committees. So this is very much a kind of a participant, you know, led organization. You know, the, it's the youth services librarians from around the country pulling together and really making a fantastic product. And then the organization works with the vendor so that you have one place to go to, to purchase the materials. And um, so the Alaska State Library is a member of the Collaborative Summer Library Program. And what that means is that each participating library in our program is also a member. So you can join CSLP and take advantage of some of the wonderful resources that they have. They have, um, they come up with PSAs and, and um, all of this wonderful artwork. They also have a lot of terrific information, um, inclusive uh, information. The manual includes um, forms and things that are in Spanish. So um, there's information for children with disabilities. So there's some really, really wonderful um, resources available from the collaborative um, summer library program. And I would really highly encourage everybody to take advantage of, of that and join. So if you're interested um, in joining, you can go to their website. And then if you're interested in purchasing materials, this is where you go as well. Oops. Sorry, guys, I don't know. It's something about this is really bugging me today. I'm going the wrong direction. So on the Collaborative Library, um, Summer Collaborative Summer Library Program website, you'll see that there are, um, there's all sorts of resources. Um, there's also this shop link. And so you could click on the shop link um, and you can purchase materials from them. So the exclusive vendor is Demco. And DIMCO has created this really great online catalog. And um, it's an online catalog and order website specifically for CSLP members. So you must be logged into your CSLP account to access the links. So, you, you know, that's the first step. And then once you're logged in, you'll need to click on the um, CSLP order link to access your um, exclusive, um, to uh, access their exclusive resources. But in order to do that, you have to sign in with DIMCO first. So two sign-ins. One is with CSLP and then the other one is with DIMCO. Um, you can also place an order online if you don't have a DIMCO account. So if you're interested in, in, in ordering additional materials for your program, this is where you would go, okay? And just a reminder, your CSLP and, and pass, uh, CSLP and CSLP login and password will not log you into your DIMCO account. They're separate things. And if you have problems, I do have a phone number that I can share with you um, so you can get some help that way. So we've been talking um, a lot about the manuals, um, which is now in that little USB uh, thumb drive. And there's a lot of great resources on the manual that will help you plan and prepare um, your, uh, and even um, help you record the progress that children are making in your summer reading program. So one of my favorite sayings is fail to plan, plan to fail. And I really believe successful summer programming requires careful, careful planning. It's so much easier to design and publicize and evalu evaluate your summer reading program if you start by setting some specific goals and objectives. So we know that um, for some libraries, it's, it's, you know, summer reading, they've kind of been doing it the same way forever. And, and maybe they are seeing a drop in the number of children who are participating because maybe the program, you know, needs um, kind of have people step back and kind of look at it and see if there's things that can be done differently. So by setting some goals and setting some objectives, it really can then help you kind of evaluate 
your program at the end, and then you can make tweaks and make it a little bit better. So some of the things that you might, when you come up with a goal, it could simply be helping children develop positive attitudes about books or reading, or um, encourage regular use of the library. Um, it could be um, helping children maintaining their reading skills during the summer vacation. So you're gonna plan your program with those goals in mind. Um, some of the objectives, maybe you want to have 75% of your participants complete your program. Maybe the past couple of years, you've had all these children register, but only a small fraction of those kids finish the program. So maybe what you want to do this year um, is to have a lot more of those kids complete the program. Um, maybe you have one or two special events normally, and maybe this year you want to bump that number up uh, to include more special programs, bring in a special a performer or um, take the kids on a field trip or do whatever. But it's nice to kind of know what your what your program, what you want to achieve with your summer reading program. So as you're, um, and when you're planning your program, talk to the other staff um, and, and include them because, you know, often summer reading in a smaller community library, it has a big impact on all the other staff working at your library. So, you know, maybe you get really excited about summer reading, but maybe they not so much. <laughs> and maybe if you include them in the, you know, development of the program, they'll have a little bit more buy-in and be more excited about it too. And, you know, they've been probably watching your program for years. They might have some ideas. Um, so um, also when you want to think about your different age groups, you know, who are going to be participating in your program. Are you going to open it up for teens? Are you going to offer something for adults? It's been fantastic to watch the statistics over the past couple of years and see more and more libraries offering summer reading programs for adults and teens. Um, I think when you have the whole family engaged in an activity, I think it's great. You know, the children are seeing the, the, the parents and, the, and their older brothers and sisters modeling these positive behaviors, and that's exciting. Um, so think about also how you're going to register, you know, um, how are you going to register? Are, can people register online for your program or do they need to come into the library and do it? Or maybe you don't even have people register. You just have people show up. Are you going to um, are you going to be providing them with a, a calendar with scheduled uh, all of the scheduled events for the summer reading program? Are you going to be offering them a, a suggested reading or activity list? Um, and how are, are you going to be rewarding them for, for uh, completing the program? Maybe, um, do you need volunteers? I mean, there's so many questions. That's why it's so important to start early, start planning your program early and really be thinking these through. Okay. Any comments or suggestions about anything that we've talked about so far? We've got lots of people online and I would love for people to share. How many of you are offering uh, online registration for folks at your library for summer reading? Anybody? Okay, how many people are, can kids register by themselves or do the, does a parent have to register them? I hear crickets. <laughs> all right. Don't have to be shy. We're all friends here. Um, okay. Okay. We do old fashioned paper and somebody else added, it depends on the age of the child. Okay. And that's probably, you know, lots of people are doing it that way. And if that works for you, that's great. And those are the kind of things that when we have the panel discussion, it's nice for people to share because there's so many different ways to approach registration and evaluation and completion and who you're counting as a participant. I mean, there's just a lot of different ways to do it. Okay, um, so during your summer reading program, you may want to encourage families to read aloud together. In your manual is a parents as reading partners contract, and it includes a parent's pledge to read aloud to their children for a set amount of time. And I think it's really great because this form allows the parent to set the, the amount of time. So they know how busy they are, and they know what they can truly commit to. And I think that's fantastic. So the parents, can pledge, you know, I'm going to read half an hour a day or a week or whatever. And on that form, they also have a place for them to record the books that they have read to their children. And they can then return the completed form to the library to receive a certificate or and um, or perhaps be entered into a drawing. So it's kind of up to you at the library what you want to do it, to it. 
So again, the reading um, is a family affair handout is in your manual and could easily be modified for your program. And, and then you could include it in your summer registration packet, right? If you get, if you have a packet. So you also want to think about how you're going to be promoting your summer reading program in your library. Lots of libraries um, create really colorful bulletin boards or they paint their windows or they um, create little flyers that are distributed in the community, like have local businesses that are saying um, that they are a supporter of your summer reading program. Um, you know, lots of libraries send out information directly to the school or they schedule a school meeting, I mean a school visit. I know the folks in Juneau, oftentimes they will put on like a little interactive skit, so they'll schedule all these school visits and then they'll um, do a little skit and get the kids excited about the theme. So there's a lot of different ways that you can promote your summer reading program as well. Okay, I have a comment from Felicia. We don't have pre-registration anymore. Parents and adults sign up kids. Um, when they bring them to the book to book camp. OK, and then Susan also said we like the face to face personal contact. And I think I like it. Think lots of libraries do, too. You want, you know, the parents bring in the kids and they have a happy librarian and it's not so scary when they then leave the kid with the librarian for a little bit to <laughs> go to the program. OK, so your summer reading manual um, includes actually four manuals. There's an early literacy um, manual, a children's manual, teen, adult, and then this year we have the bonus summer health program manual created um, in partnership between CSLP and the National Library of Medicine. So each manual includes suggestions on how to set goals and objectives, recommendations for making um, your program more accessible for uh, children with disabilities and also more inclusive. There's also a helpful 2019 summer library program timeline to kind of help you um, kind of help you get started with your program or your program planning. So uh, the timeline, you know, you can make it work for you. But what they suggest is that, you know, in January through March, this, you start possibly reaching out to uh, potential uh, performers or or other partners um, that you're going to be working with. In February through March, that's when you start uh, calling schools to schedule visits. So you may only have one school in your community, so that might be you know, a real easy phone call. But if you live in a bigger community with lots of schools, um, you might want to start earlier on that. In April, you'll start creating your flyers and any other promotional literature. And in May, you visit schools and really begin heavily, you know, this would probably be early May, publicizing your program and begin signing up for children, the teens or the adults. And then in the summer, you have fun, right? And in September, you will evaluate your program. So um, <clears throat> let's go here. So one of the things about the manual that I noticed this year, maybe it's been here before, but this was the first time that I really noticed it, is that they have these little abbreviations and symbols to kind of help you identify the programs or activities that are geared uh, specifically for primary age children or intermediate age kids, low cost activities, which is really great for a lot of our folks, um, um, a lot of our libraries. And then those programs are a little bit more involved that would probably require the assistance of some volunteers or parents. Um, and then there's also abbreviations and symbols uh, that identify diverse characters. Um, or books that provide an um, that are provided in alternative formats from the National Library Service for the Blind. So here's just one little activity. We have the giant space invaders. And so you can see from this abbreviation of this little synth symbol, this is a low cost activity. So what are we talking about? We're talking about you need some boxes, some floor tapes, some bean bags. And what you're going to do or what the kids are going to do is create a grid of box towers to mimic space invader lineup of ships and each um, each tower directly behind the previous tower but far enough away that a domino folk domino a domino effect is unlikely so basically they're going to be constructing things on the floor and then throwing bean bags at them and seeing if they can knock them down which quite frankly sounds like a lot of fun so <laughs> i think that would be a popular activity um, but it's nice to know that they they've kind of helped you um, identify those kind of different activities so here is um the summer, um, the 2019 summer health programming manual. Um, 
again, so the national seems like, and I, I don't know, I, but I just get this feeling the National Library of Medicine is really working very hard to make inroads into public libraries, and I think that's great. Um, I'm a big, huge fan of consumer health information and, and some of their resources and products. So this is the first time, though, that I've seen that they're really kind of targeting kids. And so they, their manual, it's not very dense or anything, but they have several activities um, um, included, and they're all kind of hands-on kind of science and STEM activities. So the first, there's one called um, We Are All Made of Stardust, Bubbles in Space, Incredible Edible DNA, which actually um, looks like a lot of fun, and then Food in Space, and then Your Family, Your History, and Your Health. So you might want to check those out and, and see if you can incorporate them into your program. Um, I see another comment from the chat. I don't want to miss anything. Um, any age, we're going back to the signups and registration. So any age for us, but no online option, poor internet in our community. Our registration process is coming into the library to get a reading chart and filling out a raffle ticket as a reward for participating. More raffle tickets as they complete uh, rows of their chart or attend events. Okay, thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thanks everybody who's been sharing in the chat. If you have a mic, I'm happy for people to use that as well. Okay. Um, it's just more fun. The more voices, the better. Um, so reporting. When planning your program, you also want to um, determine how children, teens, or adult, adults are going to be re, uh, reporting their reading um, or the number of activity, activities that they have engaged on. So on the slide are two examples um, from your manual. So on the left-hand side, left-hand side of the slide is a time log. So with children crossing out a symbol for every 15 minutes of reading, it's kind of like a kind of nice way to incorporate math, right, into your summer reading. Um, and then the one in the middle is kind of, um, is more of an incentive uh, game that children can select uh, which of the eight activities they want to participate and turn it in for a prize. And then um, on the far right, some libraries are kind of moving away from offering children prizes and are offering them more experiential activities instead. So what this is, is this robot is actually, it doesn't look really large right here on, on here, but he's actually a very large robot. And the kids, um, as they complete activities, are giving a, a color piece of tape and they get to go and attach it and kind of help build this robot. It's like a group activity where everyone's participating. So the more the children read or the more activities they, they get, the more stickers they can contribute to the building of the robot, right? So lots of libraries are kind of, um, instead of offering children prizes for reading, um, you know, ch children are um, invited to special activities at the library or they're given curiosity kits, um, kind of hands-on STEM activities that they can then take home with them. And, and they're just kind of moving uh, away from the tchotchkes and doing more um, other types of um, things. If you guys have offer, uh, any suggestions on what you do, that, I'd be happy to hear about that as well. So here's, um, oh, uh, one thing uh, also I want to say about reporting. So it's not just that the kids um, get to report about their what they've read or the activities that they've participated in. At the end of the summer, you, you're going to have to be providing the State Library with a report as well. Um, so each library that participates in the statewide summer reading program is, is required to submit a final report. And we'll be asking you to provide us with information about like the number of children, teens, or adults that participated in your program, the first day of your program, the last day of your program, um, how much money um, you received locally to support your program, who those funders were, a description of your program, whether or not you used the um, promotional materials that we sent, um, and then your suggestions for any future reading summer themes idea. Okay, on this slide is like an image, um, it's, it's a, a little coupon. So we're talking about like moving away from um, the tchotchkes. But another thing that some public libraries are doing are kind of having these altruistic type programs. So children read and they can, they can decide. Maybe I want to read and I want to um, garner stickers or whatever, and I want to, the more stickers, you know, the different level of price I get to um, select from, or I can take my stickers and I can donate it to the local animal shelter, um, a food pantry, um, or some other 
uh, nonprofit organization in my community. And I can feel good about that contribution um, that I'm making versus I'm taking, you know, just getting a prize and going home with that. So they're leaving that decision up to the kids, and which I think is fantastic. It's not like we're trying to force them to feel one way or the other, but we're just letting them know that there's opportunities to do things different, right? So um, that's another um, kind of uh, trend that we're seeing in, li in libraries. Okay, so we were talking a lot about STEM activities and, um, and one of the really great resources for STEM activities is the STEM activity clearinghouse. And on this website, you know, librarians and library staff can find really high quality vetted STEM activities that are appropriate for library use. And, you know, hopefully everyone, you know, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And these are um, activities that are a little bit open ended and really help encourage children to problem solve and to think and to see connections, you know, between the science and, and, um, and mathematics and engineering and all that. Um, these are just three of the different activities that I found that were on there. There's the wind streamer, is it solid or liquid? And um, they can build a space uh, colony. You can see that the um, we've got kids, that, you know, the, the, these are all hands-on type activities. Um, this clearinghouse has, it's just really well created. So again, all of the collections have been curated. Um, a lot of the, uh, almost all the activities have pictures or videos of, of real libraries doing the activities. Um, they include really great manuals, instruction manuals for implementing the activity. Um, and it's all available for free. And so you, I would really encourage everyone to kind of go through there and, and look around and see what's available. It's just a terrific activity. And so, um, you can see in the URL that this is part of the StarNet libraries. And so when we're offering that, those um, facilitators that are going to be coming to Anchorage, they're in, that when we're talking about that they um, are associated with StarNet, this is, this is who they're associated with. So um, I just wanted everyone to know about that. Have any of you used these activities before? Are you familiar with them? So that's pretty much everything that I had to share with you guys today. Um, I have time for questions. <laughs> Everyone wants to share any questions. I'd love to talk to you guys. Okay, here we go. Um, Okay, uh, this is from Susan to everyone. Uh, we just had a representative from Civil Air Patrol come and talk about a whole bunch of free STEM kits that you can get by signing up for uh, the CA Civil Air Patrol or CAP for $35. And the lady, lady said that there's about $2,000 worth of kits you can get for free. We haven't tried it yet, but it sounds good. Okay, that's a fantastic lead. I hope everyone will go back to their community and contact their local Civil Air Patrol. Um, they're a fantastic organization. And um, I wasn't aware of the STEM kits, but I'm going to make a note and um, find out more about it. I do know that they, that, um, they do have like an educational piece to the program, but I wasn't aware that they were offering STEM kits. So that's fantastic. Um, any other questions about summer reading? Again, if you didn't, uh, we have Peggy. She says that we are part of CA, CAP, so that's good to know. And you know, that's a terrific partner that I didn't even think about, but think about it, you know, flying. I mean, that's, that's totally works with, um, with this summer theme. So, you know, flight is fantastic. It's a great resource. Um, anything else? Again, if you have a mic and you wanna speak, I'm happy to have people do that. Okay, this how is many of you that are planning to come to the ACLA conference? We're gonna, hopefully, I know we have Jen and we have Susan. Anybody else? Okay, what about the NASA STEM kits openings that got canceled? I'm not sure what you're referring to, Elizabeth. The NASA STEM kit openings that got canceled. Are you talking about, so Daniel Cornwell 
um, he wrote a um, a grant for STEM materials. Right. OK, right. So. Um, I'm not I know they were canceled for a while, um, but I'm not sure if they're canceled now. But um, so our library did receive those STEM kits and they have been cataloged. I know Daniel's been working with our cataloger to get those materials ready to be circulated to public libraries and also to school libraries. Um, I'm sure he'll be providing more information um, on the ACLA listserv about that. He might be also be sending out direct uh, information to, to libraries about that when they're ready to go out. And I know that that program also received some funding to do some programming. And I, I believe that Daniel's been working with some libra other librarians on the possibility of bringing a, an astronaut to Alaska and having that astronaut travel around to libraries. So I do believe there'll be more information about that later. But um, that program was shut down during the uh, when the government shutdown happened. Um, my understanding is um, things have gotten back up and are running, but Daniel could speak to that um, better than I. So Daniel Cornwall at Alaska.gov. Yeah, I know, very exciting. I know there was a lot of um, hopes. Um, some people were really trying to get like maybe one of the female astronauts to come, but uh, you know, you, do, you can't always, you know, you say that you want an astronaut, but I don't know how specifically you can say which astronaut you want. I have no information about Steven's puppets. I'm, I'm not involved in that at all. Um, normally what happens is some libraries get together and write an ILC to fund that. It's it's you know we fund the ILC grant, but we're not involved in the organization of of their tour, so I can't speak to Stevens puppets. Um, and I would I don't even know what stories they're offering this year. I know it changes, but they are well loved um, performers. Oh, Goldilocks, oh, that'd be fun. Okay, sounds like Sarah Saxton uh, at Wasilla is involved in that. So thank you, Peggy, for letting us know. Okay. All right, any other questions? One thing that I didn't uh, talk about was the po uh, project outcome summer reading um, surveys. We did create some templates for the uh, our libraries, and, but I'll be sending out information about that later um, in the in the year. Um, we would love more and more libraries. You know, we're kind of harping about the evaluation piece. We think it's really important um, for you to know what how your programs are being perceived. Um, and how they're valued by the people that you're giving those programs to. And Project Outcome, it's freely available and it's a great, it, it pulls that um, information um, nationally too. And, it, and I think that's a positive thing for all libraries. So more information about that evaluation, um, but it'll happen after after the ACLA conference. <laughs> it's, it's all about ACLA right now. All right, well, thanks folks. Um, you can always contact me if you have any more questions. And again, if you don't didn't receive a, um, if you didn't register and you want to, I do have a few um, kits available I can send out to you. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you, and thanks all those brave panelists. <laughs> we'll be at the summer reading battle. All right. Thanks everybody.